Okay, we're starting off at verse 8. As you might recall, there are two witnesses, and they are Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah, they prophesy, and then they preach for about three and a half years. So as Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses for the people during the last days, we do know that they're going to help out the children of Israel during the persecution of the Antichrist. The Antichrist, he resurrects himself from the dead, as I covered from last teaching. And then when the Antichrist raises himself from the dead, he kills these two witnesses. So eventually, he's able to get his vengeance and then kill off the two witnesses. The two witnesses, you'll notice what the Bible reads about them, that when they die, they don't even bury their bodies they just let it lie, down, lie out on the streets. The verse says over here, <clears throat> verse 8, And their dead bodies, so they died, shall lie in the street of the great city. So their, their dead bodies are lying in the middle of the street. But notice it says of that great city. So then the question is, is that uh, which street of this great city is it referring to? So then the great city will be referring to Jerusalem, actually. So the city would be referring to Jerusalem of that time. Okay, so then we're going to look at the, ver the verses before, the first verses at Revelation chapter 11. You might recall it was talking about that temple on the earth. Verse 2 calls it holy city. The city that is called Holy City with a temple and an altar is a no-brainer. That's referring to Jerusalem. So by context, that great city is referring to Jerusalem. But the answer is more obvious when you keep reading. Now remember, this is literally verse by verse, and I'm trying to explain each and every word in the verse. Because sometimes people, as you might recall, people who get saved, they have a hard time understanding the Bible. So usually, uh, the verse-by-verse -verse Bible study really helps them. So pay attention to how I explain every word in the verse, because you want to make sure if what I'm explaining lines up with that book anyway. Amen. So pay attention and not just nod your head and go, Amen, all right? <laughs> all right. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right, Revelation chapter 11. Notice as we keep reading over here, street of the great city. Let's figure out this great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now notice, spiritually, God calls it that. So it is so wicked that spiritually it is called Sodom and Egypt. Well, then why is it Jerusalem, Pastor? Because it's spiritually called. So that's why it makes a lot of sense when we say that, for example... Uh, the system of Catholicism, it did not start uh, during the early A.D.s or the first centuries. The, the spirit of the system of Roman Catholicism was like ever since all the way at the Old Testament. Why? Because we're looking at the spirit. Remember how I explained Revelation 2 and 3? How Jezebel, Balaam, Balak, that all refer to the Catholic system? Why is that? You, have, you can't look at the name. Catholic. You can't look at the name Balaam, Balak, etc. You got to look at the spirit behind it. And then you'll see that all of them have it the same thing in common. Jezebel, Balaam, Balak, etc., etc. So you got to pay attention when God says spiritually called. Because there is an evil spirit that possesses it that results with that kind of result with the city. You got to realize there's a spiritual influence. So remember that there, in every physical working, there could be a spiritual force at work. It can be the Holy Spirit or it could be a spiritual force, Satan, the god of forces. Okay, so spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, but the physical place we know. Keep reading. Where also our Lord was crucified. See, where Jesus died, where he was crucified. Thus we know it has to be referring to Jerusalem. Right. Now remember at the first two verses, God called it Holy City. What happened? Remember the first verses we read at Revelation 11 says it's a holy city, but it was corrupted by the Antichrist forces. 
That's why it spiritually what became Sodom and Egypt. So that's what happened to that place. Look up the spirit of Sodom throughout your Bible and the spirit of Egypt and look at, at the past 2,000 years of church history. Look at in our city today, that spirit is all over. Sodom and Egypt all over. Sodom and Egypt is everywhere. Okay, verse 9. And they of the people, so all sorts of people and kindreds, all sorts of different tribes, kindreds, and tongues, see that's languages, diversities, and nations, different nationalities, shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. So notice that they're able to see their dead bodies on the streets, everyone around the world. So everyone around the world, the whole world is watching for three days and a half. Notice, well, shouldn't they take care of the bodies? No, they don't care. They hate these two witnesses so much that the middle of verse 9 says, and shall not suffer their dead bodies. So suffer, meaning tolerate, right, or allow. They're not going to allow, put up with their dead bodies to be put in graves. They're going to let it lie down. Now, when these two witnesses are killed, how are they killed? If you look at Revelation chapter 20, keep your hand at Revelation 11. Keep your hand at Revelation 11 and go to Revelation 20. How does the Antichrist kill God's saints? He kills them by beheading them. So Moses and Elijah get their heads chopped off. So can you imagine that? Their heads are lying out in the middle of the street. So their heads are like lying out in the middle of the street and then people just let it lie. That's how wicked our world comes. No, I can't imagine our government, our world doing that. You know, you'd be surprised. See, the city of Jerusalem, what did they do when Jesus walked inside? He, You're going to reign over us. Hosanna to the highest. Same week, crucify him. Yeah. Crucify him. Wow. People change. You'd be surprised. People change and switch. You, you better watch out that human nature. If you are spiritually honest with yourself, you do know that you yourself just change like that too. Yeah, yeah, summer camp's over, blowout's over, the preaching's over. Great sermon, pastor, praise the Lord, the same week you turn out to be a devil. And then there's something that happens in your life or you cause a problem. Yeah, stick around, you'll find out. Yeah, we may be hard on this wicked world. Man, I can't believe it. No, it's a universal thing. It's called human nature. We're all capable of that. That's why you have to be very on guard with this flesh. This pastor might be preaching truth right now, but, but man, do I fear what my flesh is capable of later on throughout that day. If you don't have that kind of fear of yourself, that pride's going to sink in and the devil's going to get you. And these big shot pastors who had the fame and other pastors looking up to them and stuff like that, they fell. Watch out for that pride. All right, Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat, sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast. So notice right here that God saints how they were killed by the beast, by this Antichrist, was through getting their heads chopped off. That's why it's a scary thing that during the so-called French Enlightenment, that was the most convenient way to do execution. So it's that gu guillotine. And then, you know, you hear the, some of the conspiracies about FEMA camps and stuff like that. I mean, things are setting up. If you look at some uh, where Georgia, they used to try to push out this thing uh, within their government offices, they included that uh, beheading option, actually. So we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation 11. So their dead bodies are lying at the street. Notice at verse 9, it says three and a half. That's a significant number, actually. So three and a half days. So Dr. Elkman, he mentioned this way. He mentioned that if you look at, so three and a half days is a very significant number to, and then he mentioned, so look out for a high noon Wednesday, he would say. Mm -hmm. 
So then, if Daniel 9.27 is true as application to the seven-year tribulation, if that part is true, Dr. Upman mentioned in his old commentary book on Revelation that the, that the treaty that the Antichrist make, it's broken in the middle. So then this three and a half days, he mentioned that as something interesting. So I don't know if there might be something to that, depending how many years of the tribulation you want to put. But th there is no doubt that concerning three and a half days, there is something interesting to this. So concerning about Jesus Christ, we talk about how, how he died. So he died when he was crucified. But when he died, there are people who talk about Palm Sunday and Good Friday, and then the days are just so way out of line that some Greek scholars, they try to help out God that half a day could refer to a day. No, God already told you three and a half days here. So he can tell you three days, three and a half days over yeah. here. If Jesus Christ was buried three days, three nights, then yes, three days, three nights. So some of these Greek scholars, they tried to help out God to fit it with Good Friday, where it doesn't literally mean three days, three nights. No, that's not how it works. So then, the Jewish calendar, how they start out their day, is actually at the evening that they do it. So at 6. So that's how a Jewish calendar worked back then. And then how Dr. Uckman explained it concerning this one is that when Jesus Christ was buried, then you have basically, so you would have it as, let's see here, he mentioned all night Wednesday, then all night Thursday, and then all night Friday. So then you would have all day Thursday, all day Friday, and then all day Saturday. Saturday night, he came up according to the Jewish calendar, but that's the start of their day. The start of our day for that one would be on a Sunday, see? So then Wednesday evening, right? Then you got uh, Thursday evening. Then you got Friday evening. And then you got the morning hours, obviously. And that would be all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. So then, all day Saturday, right? Then Saturday evening, right? Since it's Saturday evening, according to the Jewish dates or the Jewish calendar back then, that would be the new day for them. So for us, in our calendar today, that would be considered a what? That would be considered a Sunday. Yeah. So that's how it worked. Yeah. Jesus says, as Jonah was three days and th uh, three nights at the whale's be belly, so the Son of Man will be three days, three nights at the heart of the earth. So this is how it would match up then. And what's interesting is that it started on a Wednesday evening, right? Perhaps that may be something significant why we would have, Thursday, uh, why we'd, we would have services on a Wednesday evening. That's usually a standard thing in churches is that they'll focus on a Wednesday evening. And then they'll have a service on a Sunday morning. So I do know for a fact that the reason why we have services Sunday morning is not because of the Catholic Church. Everyone wants to try to say that's a Catholic system, so you should not even go to church at Sunday mornings. No, early Christians before the Catholic Church came out, they were uh, serving God on Sundays because they want to observe His resurrection, actually. So there are many ancient accounts that testify to that, actually. Early church fathers who testify to that. It is true, however, that, the, that this name Sunday, because the word sun, that it is a Catholic thing. So it's just where Satan later corrupted it. And then people later on who just have uh, this overzealousness online, they only look at half-truth and then they'll say, oh, it's Catholic. No, you didn't look behind that. You didn't look before that. Not only that, you didn't read your Bible. Amen. If you read your Bible, they were worshiping God on Sunday, first day of the week. Okay, then. So establishing that fact, let's go back to our main text over here at verse 10. Uh, uh, verse 9, I forgot to mention this part. So the whole world is able to look at their dead bodies. How do you do that? It's so easy. I mean, it's not a no-brainer to us. The whole world can see that. Yeah. 
Every, a child is getting this one too. So man, woman, child, they all have access to this and they can see their dead bodies lie on the street. But let me tell you something, at the first century, to say that every single person around the world can see their dead bodies in one location, that's impossible. Right. There's no way. How can you do that? So guess what? If you read uh, accounts of some preachers during the Great Awakening days, mm -hmm. when they uh, look at some of their commentaries on Revelation 11, and some of them mention, I don't know how that's possible, yeah. but we take it by faith, that's what the book says. Amen. And then when TV came out, boy, oh boy, and don't tell me that book is not prophetic. Don't tell me that book, I mean, that book, man, can jump ahead of time. That book can jump ahead of time. It is some book you got in your hand. So the whole world's able to watch because of technology. William Lane Craig, brilliant guy, debating against atheists, philosophical that atheists even get lost in his language, but even a brilliant guy like that would say something very dumb and stupid that Christians say that Revelation 11 is a prophecy verse about television. I don't believe in that. Come on, man. Then, then do you have another explanation for this? How are they all going to see it then? I mean, you got a brain, right, Craig? You've debated atheists brilliantly, right? You made Christopher Hitchens sweat, right? So you got a brain, can't you tell? You don't need a brain. You don't need a major in philosophy to know. Amen. See, everyone knows. All right, look at verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth, so all of those people, right, who are living on the earth, shall rejoice over them. Wow, really? Yeah, they're going to rejoice about these two witnesses who got killed and make merry. Ah, so this is at a day when they're making merry, like Merry Christmas, right? But if you think that's a stretch, keep reading, and shall send gifts one to another. They're giving gifts to each other too. How about that? So we can see right here what day it would be. It would be on the day of Christmas. So look at that. That's very interesting. On Christmas Day, everyone is saying, man, those two witnesses are dead. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We got rid of those two terrorists, child. You know, you know why? Because these people were not environmentalists. They were killing the environment. They stopped the rain. They made all the water turn into blood. And because this world prizes the environment more than the baby that is born, they don't hesitate about this kind of death. They're used to seeing so much blood already at the clinics. Right. See, Pete, uh, with that preach over there? See, you, you don't think mankind is capable to do this. But the problem is, is that you're already immune right. to some of the stupid things that they're doing right now. Yeah. And to you, when I'm talking about this kind of stuff to you, you think that, oh, uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, it's, isn't it natural that we do this? It's not murder. It's not something hateful. It's not something uh, chaotic or grotesque. See, that's what they're going to be thinking, that same mindset when these two witnesses lo lose their heads. They're going to give the same mindset. Oh, you think this is grotesque, that this is so wicked and stuff like that. No. Give it time. Human nature, you'd be surprised what it's capable of. You'd be surprised. Some of these doctors in the uh, Congress meetings when they would talk about that they used to be the doctors who would perform the abortions, you should see all these feminists over there. Like he would describe every body part that, that he would have to dissect and pull out and stuff like that. And then these uh, people who are into liberalism, feminism, I mean, you should see the conviction on their faces when they hear that. But you know why they forgot the conviction? They gotten so used to it. They gotten immune. Gotten immune. See, that's what the world needs. The world just has to put a pretty picture over it. Make you forget it.